Stick around as we uncover fascinating facts about the show. It was pitched to Cinemax before Amazon Prime. The Boys is now synonymous with Amazon Prime, but it wasn't always the plan for the streaming giant to air the show. Three years before the show aired on Amazon, showrunner Eric Kripke pitched and sold the pilot of the series to Cinemax, which would have been a big deal for the TV channel if they ended up going through with producing the show. Eventually, Cinemax told Kripke that they did not have the budget to produce the pilot. Instead of being disappointed, Kripke revealed that he was happy that Cinemax let the show go instead of producing a version that he didn't intend to make. It seems Kripke wanted the show to push as many boundaries as possible, and Amazon was much more game for that than Cinemax. Shortly after Cinemax passed on the series, Amazon picked it up because they decided they wanted to make content for a broader audience and gave Kripke almost full creative control. The black noir actor is actually allergic to nuts. In a case of art imitating life, we have something that might pique your interest. Nathan Mitchell, the actor who plays black noir in The Boys, actually has a nut allergy that could become deadly if not attended to. In season two of The Boys, Black Noir is taken down by Queen Maeve after she shoves up an Almond Joy down his throat. The show did some uncanny fourth wall twist by giving Nathan Mitchell's character the same allergy the actor has in real life. Karen Fukuhara developed her own sign language. Kimiko has a tremendous character development arc in season two of The Boys. In the second season of the show, Kimiko meets Kenji, the mute Kimiko converses with her brother with a unique form of sign language. Karen Fukuhara worked tirelessly with sign language expert Amanda Richer to learn the actual sign language to authentically pull it off on screen. She then added her own distinct hand signs and gestures to create an entirely new gesture-based language on her own. Stormfront was supposed to be male. In the comic books, Stormfront was one of the many Nazi superchildren that were produced by Hitler's scientists during the final phases of World War II. After Stormfront was deemed unpredictable and uncontrollable, Hitler wanted to get rid of the soup, who eventually found a way to America under the Vought Industries banner. It was from Stormfront's DNA that Homelander came into being, and most important of all, the soup was a man, not a woman. The show changed the gender of the character because a woman can control a man in ways another man never could. Also, the chemistry between Homelander and Stormfront looks way more legit and interesting to watch. In the show, Starlight starts visibly opposing the various decisions Vought starts taking for her. One of the decisions she never had a say in was her super raunchy and revealing suit. But it was not just the character that opposed the suit. Erin Moriarty, the one who plays Starlight in The Boys, was also against wearing it. While her character's motivations for opposing the suit were on moral grounds, Erin Moriarty felt the suit was very uncomfortable and made life hell for her on set. In an interview with Insider, Moriarty said it was very difficult to go to the bathroom when you are wearing such a tight suit like that. Seth Rogen serves as an executive producer in the Amazon Prime original series. But if fate would have had its way, then this comic actor would have been directing the very pilot episode of The Boys. Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg co-created the live-action adaptation of Garth Ennis's Preacher. So they were actually the first choices for The Boys. The reason they did not come into the picture was scheduling conflicts. As a result, 10 Cloverfield Lane director Dan Trachtenberg was roped in for the series. The Boys is no stranger to violence on a grand scale. As a result of its mature content, it is bound to be embroiled in some form of controversy. A certain scene filmed in Toronto had so much mayhem and carnage that a few Toronto residents believed it showed the area in a bad light. Protesters took to the streets after a scene filmed in the Mel Lastman Square drew massive ire. The people claimed the scene was eerily familiar to an actual event that happened in 2018 in the area where many innocents died. It was not until John Fillion, Toronto councillor, stepped in that the issue was resolved. She was simply called the female throughout the entire run, arguably as part of her mystique. Eric Kripke gave her a name and changed her origin in order to make the character more sympathetic and human. The Boys co-creator Eric Kripke discussed replacing Jack from Jupiter with Translucent and revealed that the change was made because having an alien-looking character would mess with the mythology of the human characters being born with powers.
Huey was designed to look like Simon Pegg. Robertson notes that he had seen Pegg in the UK sitcom Spaced, where he plays comic store worker and struggling artist Tim Bisley. Oh my God. What? I've got some fucking Jaffa cakes in my coat pocket. Pegg wasn't officially informed of his involvement with the original comics, despite going on to have a major involvement in Amazon's ultra-successful adaptation. Pegg spoke about learning that an artist named Derek Robertson had appropriated his likeness for a new comic book written by Garth Ennis, and said that, had I not been a comic fan, or indeed an admirer of Garth's previous works, I might have been a little pissed off. The final shot of season two of The Boys depicts Homelander pleasuring himself on top of the Chrysler building, screaming, I can do whatever the fuck I want. The scene was actually shot for season one, but was cut after Amazon execs deemed it too much. It's a fascinating caveat for many reasons. The shot is bizarrely beautiful, but the scene changes entirely depending on the context. At the end of season one, the scene would have been disgustingly celebratory and a bit on the nose. At the end of season two, it's a provocative way to show just how broken and impotent Homelander is in the wake of his defeat. The timeline of The Boys goes from May to mid-October. Canada is known for their extreme winters, so it was a big time crunch to get everything filmed before all of the outdoor filming locations would be covered in snow. A nature-related delay could have set the release date back another year. When promotion first began for The Boys back in 2019, Fans couldn't help but notice Chase Crawford's bulge in his wetsuit. But when the show debuted that summer, that bulge was nowhere to be found. Chase revealed the reasoning behind the disappearing dong that the Deep was supposed to have a comically large penis. But when Amazon executives found out about it, they immediately made a change. He went on to explain that the producers used CGI to carefully reduce the size of his character's penis in scenes that he'd already filmed. That's a wrap on our deep dive into the boys. We hope you enjoyed these surprising facts about the show. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content, and hit that bell icon to stay updated. Let us know your favorite moments from the boys in the comments below.